sponsored by Surfshark VPN. With a video topic like this, you're probably asking... Oh my god, who the hell cares? Me, bitch! Water in gaming is more important than you would think. From the 90s and 2000s, consoles were making their biggest graphical leaps ever. It was insane and something we'll never experience again. But one of the best ways to show off power was liquefied simulations. Sometimes it didn't add to the gameplay, but it just looked nice. Did the fighting game Virtual Fighter 4 need to have interactive ripples in its menu? Yes, it did. Water was a selling point. The GameCube's freaking codename was Dolphin, all because, um... Nintendo doesn't remember, apparently, but there sure were a lot of water games on there, huh? So, from boats to jet skis, tonight we're focusing on water racing games. As many as I can. Oh, and thanks to Meriwether Comics for the extra voice work on this vid. They do comics and commentary videos. It's Juice and Jam time. A new opponent is ready to face. We want fun, and you might as well face Two liter bottle of Shasta and my all Russian mixtape. Let's rock. There'd be a photo finish if you weren't so ugly, dude! By 2001, it was tough for a jet ski game to stand out when competition was growing. That's where Splashdown on PS2 and Xbox got our attention with this commercial, popping in water-related fun facts like 3% of humans are born with webbed feet, or porcupines float in water. Okay, that's not all that interesting. And most intriguing fact of all is this is actual game footage. Oh yeah, that water, that song, it don't get more 2000s than music by Bowling for Soup. That is actually SR71. Shut up. Right when you boot up the game, Splashdown will notify you that it has the best soundtrack ever, and also KMFDM, which I love, but is completely out of place here. Yeah, let's go back to the fun-loving music. Now, for the racing itself, you'll find a bit of a learning curve with the physics. On straightaways, you hold back to move faster. On turns, you hold forward. Get those mixed up and you'll easily flip over. Oh, nice move. Yes, holding back speeds you up, but do not hold back when going off a ramp. With these jumps, you need all the speed you can get as holding back in the air slows you down. Even the AI on the easy difficulty will struggle with the jumps. <laughs> Should you conquer the physics, you can use it to your advantage, like holding forward to briefly go under obstacles. This can launch you into the air. It's very rewarding when you get it right, which I did not. Oh, I am Much harder! Now, your prize for mastering this racing game of colorful stereotypes are animated cutscenes, each more unfunny than the last. Like, of course, the Japanese racer has her jet ski transform into a mech. Oh, but the superior ending is for Amand Ra, an Egyptian rap singer showing off his non-existent album titled Raw Deal. Yes, 
Yes, this is actually a reference to Tunic Tunic Tune, this Indian music video that was a vintage meme in the early internet days, pre-YouTube, pre-YT and D. As for other Easter eggs, look at what happens when you drive too far out of bounds. If you want to play Splashdown, it's on PS2 and still up for sale on Walmart's website. Oh man, only two copies left, folks. But seven months after release in 2002, it was ported to Xbox, now with a nicer SSX Tricky inspired cover. This has a higher resolution and an extra song included by Newfound Glory, even the ability to use your own music too. You remember how the OG Xbox lets you rip CDs to the hard drive? I bought mine off eBay and they left behind this time capsule of poorly archived music. You say Justin Bieber? I say track three. It's The Xbox port even included two new levels which stand out since they're the only ones that have these more dynamic waves rocking you. Clearly, it's the best version. Splashdown managed to get one more sequel, often said to be superior. I'll cover that some other time. But in general, the jet ski genre dried up and so too did Extreme Sports. But its developer, Rainbow Studios, is still active making Monster Truck and MX vs ATV games. It'd be nice if, for once, they come back to make another Splashdown. I got two buttons A and B and got no reason for C. Get it, got a ninja, ninja, gotta get in, not even a go. I get laid in twice. Watch out, so the pop is keep his ass, made some instant. So before YouTube existed around 2005, I used to hang out on Google Video, which no longer exists. It's where I found this one song, Nintendo Power by BS101, a tribute to the NES. While my earliest memories are for Super Nintendo, I would listen to this for recommendations of various games before my time, like... Eliminate a boat duel, so cool! Play me, bitch, you get schooled! Now, most racing games from around 91 were either top-down or behind the back, but Eliminator Boat Duel does both. Hmm? Duel? Beyond the gimmick, you race and buy upgrades, though your boat will take damage, so you'll have to constantly be rebuying the same upgrades already purchased with the same red versus green vehicles. There are no other colors. It barely feels like you're making much progress. Yeah, it's an NES game, but Micro Machines has far more visual variety than this. Boat Duel's presentation is at least nice, like if it's a photo finish, the babes, as they were called at the time, will demand a slow-mo replay. I also love these archie ass portraits showing off how much of a stud you are winning these races. Yeah, that Karen ain't gonna score your girl. Stay out of river day. While Eliminator Boat Duel is forgettable, it's remembered more for being on Switch Online with its atrociously neon colors. If I'm telling you there's too much color, you screwed up big time. Look at that. It's a damn third impact via Kool-Aid packs. If this happened tomorrow, I'll be there boat racing with the last surviving Ava pilots. Rea Yanami can lay that ass on me. Yeah, bitch. WrestleMania, Castlevania, dreams off a of cooking in Transylvania. When it's around, the blisters came. Just one question. You got game. If you thought the future of motorsport involved shoving bad dragons up your ass while snorting coke off George Jetson's wife, well, you were wrong. Welcome to Jet Moto, a PlayStation 1 racer on hoverbikes. It's a tough game because you're competing against 20 drivers and 40 pixels on screen. Now, here's an SAT question. If Motorstorm on PS3 was to excite truck on Wii, then Jet Moto is to Wave Race 64. No casual baby ass Nintendo simplicity. This is a hardcore Sony racer with no room for error. Your best tool is the magnetic grapple that'll help you on turns tighter than my sweet kicks. It's a tough game to play with cluttered environments or a stage where the designers gave up and put a bunch of ice cubes in a row. <laughs> 
Oh, and tracks had to loop back into itself, forcing you into oncoming traffic. This is a goddamn mess. And you can use a cheat code to unlock this stage in developer Single Track's other game, Twisted Metal 2. They reused it as a hidden multiplayer map. <laughs> Beyond the X Games attitude and Surf meets Spy music, I can't get enough of the 90s comic book art representing the characters. These were drawn by comic book artist Sal Veluto. The game developers were fans of his work and asked him to design practically the entire aesthetic. In a May 2000 interview with Pop Image, he says, I happen to be a great lover of production design, and when it comes to drawing racing vehicles, I have a hard time restraining my pencil from going 100 miles an hour. So I accepted the challenge and went on to produce all sorts of concept art for exotic flying bullet bikes, riders' uniforms resembling something between a space shuttle astronaut and a World War I fighter pilot racing tracks which defy the laws of gravity and all the accoutrements of extreme motorcycle racing taken to a further extreme. So each of Jet Moto 1's cast is divided into four teams named after their sponsor, half of them being real brands, Butterfingers and Mountain Dew. Yeah, they're not a team that happens to have a sponsor, they are the sponsor. It's like if the Super Bowl was pitting Walmart versus Disney. How dystopian, Jet Moto has some hard-hitting commentary. Now look at this, a third of the locations are destroyed highways, possibly after a great flood. What's up with that, huh? So what's also worth noting is the options menu has this toggle. When you win a race, you can choose what skimpily dressed person will give your character a trophy. A man, a woman, or whichever your in-game character prefers. Two of the writers actually want someone of the same sex, implying some ultra-subtle gay reps. It's almost unnoticeable, but it's likely as much as they could do in 1996 without pissing off Sony or the sponsors. It's certainly way more than JK Rowling ever did. <laughs> Now, according to Twisted Metal and God of War director David Jaffe, Jet Moto was actually released without a commercial, causing the game to flop on release. But the head of 989 Game Studios asked Sony, what the heck, this game is great, why aren't you advertising it? So marketing quickly put together a TV spot in like a day. They got the guy in the Crash Bandicoot costume to talk about Jet Moto, but this was just unused footage of Crash. He's talking, but his lips don't even move. That's how fast this was made. When I'm hurtling through different terrains, snow, cotton, Concrete, ocean, jungle. I mean, when you got that kind of power between your legs, you don't know what to expect. Anything could happen. Did this late commercial save the game? Well, Jetmoto managed to get three titles, a crappy Tiger Electronics toy, and a PC port that ran smoother yet nerfed the difficulty. Along with Twisted Metal, Jetmoto is a Sony franchise I'd want to see brought back. Surf rock, extreme sports, hover bikes, come on! There were plans for a fourth title on the PS2, but was cancelled. I guess futuristic racing was becoming a cluttered market. Going back to Sal Valuto's interview, he also stated... Jetmoto ended up being one of PlayStation's most solid sellers. I understand that for the never-released Jetmoto 4, Sony hired the mythical Sid Mead, known for Blade Runner and Tron to do the new vehicle designs. I have never felt better being turned down for a project which I helped to originate. We'll be back with more water racing games after this. Are you tired of this happening? Well, you need Surfshark VPN. Yes, sir, the sponsor of tonight's video. What's a VPN? It's great. It changes your internet region and protects your privacy. You got Netflix? Just switch regions and bam, you can see what other countries have on their Netflix. It's that easy. How about something to keep you safe, especially on public Wi-Fi? Nothing can stop you. 
Use the code Rebel Taxi to get 83% off plus three extra months. Don't like that? You got a 30 day money back guarantee. Oh, what? You got an incognito window on your browser? Wow, that's completely useless. Surfshark VPN. It's got clean web. This thing will block malicious ads, trackers, and malware. Don't trust an internet provider. Trust Surfshark VPN. Use the code Rebel Taxi to get 83% off plus three extra months. You got a 30 day money back guarantee. VPN. So I never played Jet X 2 on PS2 till now, I always seen the box art in stores and wanted nothing to do with it. How come? Well, look at this, this quote unquote human. It's astonishing they allowed this horrible creature to be in the front cover, let alone walk among society, but maybe it's just the box art and his in-game model is better. Psycho? You haven't seen Psycho? No, no, you got this malnourished Jar Jar Binks representing the country he was probably ostracized from years ago. Oh wait, according to his bio, he represents France. My mistake, your majesty, I was a fool for not recognizing the prime minister. Yes? Now, you know me, I'll pick the goth chick, Ava Del Toro. Bruh, is your dead Guillermo Del Toro? I love Hellboy 2019. Even back in 2002, reviewers were already brushing this off as yet another jet ski game. It wasn't too original and did not have as much content as the competition, but still a solid title that took some SSX inspiration. Rather than laps, it's a long downhill race with tons of alternate paths and big vertical drops. Great for racking up trick energy. Oh, and that techno music and interface is so from its time. Welcome to Jet X 2 Press start to begin. Good stuff. This game's all right. First released to arcades in 1999, this ain't no off-road thunder or arctic thunder, tropic thunder, nor is it afro thunder. It's Hydro Thunder! Choose your boat! When I say boat racing video games, this should be the first that comes to mind. Hydro Thunder is a midway produced racer with such a fun variety of locations and RC toy looking vehicles with overcompensating names like Damn the Torpedo, Razorback, Misbehave. Race through tropical islands, ancient civilizations, or even an unrealistic, fantastical, flooded New York City after a natural disaster. Oh snap! Late fight with Brian O'Silva? Obviously a reference to Conan O'Brien. I got the t-shirt to prove it from his NBC days, purchased from the NBC store in New York in Rockefeller Center. Are you impressed? Do you want to bang? So, Brian Silva is actually a track designer and the iconic announcer for this game. Sound design is Hydro Thunder's specialty. Fuck off! Frankie, this one's gonna hurt! <laughs> Along with the subwoofer installed to the arcade unit, most people could never get the full sound experience at home. This is the game you play with the audio cranked up to full blast. Don't worry, you still have 30 years of good hearing left. But as with any arcade game trying to take your money, Hydro Thunder is blatantly rigged against the player. Shocker, I know. Now, I understand video games have these sort of programming illusions created to make gamers feel powerful or challenged. Stuff like shooters using auto-aim, while racers will have rubber banding, which I don't consider what Hydro Thunder does rubber banding. What that phrase means to me is when you're in first place, the AI is faster. When you're in last, the AI is slower. Who's on first can constantly be switching. With Hydro, it feels more like everyone gets a massive head start and you're just playing catch up. You can never be first until the last 30 seconds when the game allows it. You are in the lead. Time
It no longer feels like a race and instead more like you showed up late to a marathon of power walkers and got a sprint past everyone. I played so many racers in my life, but when I replayed Hydro Thunder around 2011, it was the first time that sort of quote unquote rubber banding was so blatant, so unapologetic that it killed the illusion. It's like when I realized all my OnlyFans DMs from the girls and twink guys I follow were automated group messages. It was all a lie. Hydro Thunder red pilled me. You're crazy! But when you're living in the Matrix, you just gotta enjoy that steak. These types of racers are glorified time trials. It's more about optimizing your run with as many shortcuts and boosters while you later find out you can actually jump in this game, what? Let nothing stop you from getting the world record by speeding through the destroyed remains of New York City. Hey, we're trying to save lives here, but try it out. Shut up. It's not possible to place in first unless you use every shortcut. The game teaches us cheating is the only way to victory. As they always say, nice guys finish on the ass. If you want to play at home, you got a ton of options within the 5th and 6th generation of consoles and of course a Tiger Electronics port. Me, I'm playing on the GameCube with the Midway Arcade Treasures 3 collection. As for sequels, well, that's kind of weird. You got one spiritual sequel made by the crew, one actual sequel, and a mobile game made by a different team, while that team later made their own water racing series that I love. Riptide Renegade, get it on Switch. Good to see someone keeping water racers afloat. We'll be back with more water racing games after this. By 1988, arcade graphics were getting more realistic, and so too was the violence corrupting children. All thanks to sickos like Midway and Atari with their demented arcade games. In response, programmer Dennis Harper wanted a competitive but non-violent game, so his team created... Tubin! Developed by Midway and Atari. Hey. Cover all your bases. As a far-fetched Tubin-themed racer with controls similar to Katamari, you paddle one hand to rotate, paddle both to accelerate. You just gotta be first through these gates. Enter second and you'll get less points, but don't go too fast. Should you bump the poles, points are deducted. Though if you wanna be an asshole, just keep hammering that pole to make it worthless for the opponent. It's a frantic game yet rewards precision. Press materials claim Tubin is a racing game, but these races go on forever. It's really more about survival and getting the most points. A simple game, but this river will take you everywhere, from the borders of Mexico as some banditos try to headshot you, to the Egyptian Nile guarded by foreign military armed with AK-47s. At times, the funky music will cut off to an eerie silence. Pure emptiness until this ominous track looms in. And what's this? The water turns blood red as the river transitions into the canals of Mars while aliens attack you, and then we make it to the river Styx in the underworld? Yes, really, the title says so on top. Satan has been waiting there to take your soul. How could it get any worse? Well, how about the nightmare dimension where these Illuminati pyramids shoot gazer beams, flaming red skulls chomping away, and a drowning man's hand holding a knife about to shank you? Is this kid a paper boy on the side? What the hell did he do wrong? What was the logic here? Yeah, games are too violent, so we want to take kids to a nightmare world where the Illuminati controls the flow of information in rivers. God damn, leave the kid alone. Tubin was released to arcades in a cabinet that I can only describe as eerily narrow. I am terrified for my life. It was then ported to practically everything. NES, Game Boy Color, InternetArchive.org has it on browsers. Hell, it's unlockable within LEGO Dimensions. Remember the toys to game craze? Get the Midway Arcade Pack and enter a world themed around the company's past like Gauntlet, Rampage, Marble Madness, 
or two bin. This is awesome. But no matter how many ports there are, no matter how different the graphics will be, the box art will always be terrible. This one here has a 30 year old posing as a 10 year old. I played this in arcades! Now, Tubin was not a big hit, and the gameplay really gets tiring. If anything, I'd like to see it brought back as a physics-heavy battle royale similar to Fall Guys. Just a bunch of Tubins trying to enter a single gate. Maybe then Tubin will actually show up when you Google search it, instead of Jeffrey Tubin, a New Yorker journalist who jerked off on a Zoom call. Oh no, that's not what Farfetch Tubin is about! Well, it's time skip to the year 2020 where your options for water racers are squat. Imagine a jet ski game with Mario Kart weapons, trick mechanics, turret sections, drifting, a special meter, and anime chicks. If that sounds like an overly complicated mess of a game, don't worry, it is. Kandagawa Jet Girls for PC and PS4 is so convoluted that it feels like they last minute nerfed the difficulty to ultra easy. In most of these races, you'll always be a mile ahead of anyone else. Story mode is an utter bore. Focus on racing and shooting because there isn't any dynamic waves affecting your momentum. Feels more like you're sliding on ice. On rare occasions, the difficulty will spike up my Spiegel. Only when you play the free mode allowing you to select your stage and difficulty can you see the appeal. It's a thrill maxing out your XP meter for special abilities, or taking out the opponent catching up right behind you. There's some great moments, but you really have to forgive the stiff handling or unbalanced gameplay. Jit Girls often flips from stimulus overload to feeling like you're the only one in the race. The in-between of that is the best part, but just isn't as common. Now, Kandagawa Jet Girls is a game from the people behind the Senran Kangura franchise. I think I've heard of that. A series of different gameplay styles, except they all feature ninja girls whose clothes explode. Okay. Hikagi's the best girl. I don't know anything about her, but she's got green hair. Watching Scott Pilgrim ruined my life. Some of those girls return to Kookaburra Jet Girls as DLC. I do like the new graphic style, thicker outlines and all, with less gradient shading, though Senron was much more horny on main with nudity and modes letting you squirt the girls. Oh. Oh, no. There's paid DLC to squirt her with white liquid or golden liquid. Sure, I can understand paying for alternate outfits, but this? For $3.99, who would buy this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, gotta lay off the Pepsi. On the contrary, Kawabunga Jet Girls came out when Sony was really cracking down on anything too sexual in their games. Maybe that's why it's only a T rating. Their clothes stay on and there's no squirting allowed. The worst it gets are jiggle physics. Though the anime tie-in series didn't get that memo. It's far more explicit than the games, uncensored nudity and all. Even the clothing loss mechanic is here. <laughs> Kulabara Jet Girls has a lot of ideas, but most of them don't work so well, and there's no nudity, so who the hell is this for? If there's ever a sequel, I'm sure they could greatly refine it. There's a good game in here, possibly. Okay. Okay. There is many games you do for money, but no, that's not what I meant, shush. Just let me bite for time, because I love this menu interface at night. Yeah. Jet Girls is something you play for its characters, such as the American team who obsess over anime. Yeah! Frickin' Dead Rising has sound effect. They're probably the best aspect of this entire game. Better luck next time, I guess. Oh yeah, I never showed off the white liquid. We still have time for this. You know, some things, actually most things in history are kind of dumb and everything gets ruined eventually, but in the early 1990s, for a brief shining moment, there was a beautiful union of form and function, which we call the jet ski. Wait, wait, wait. 
After covering a bunch of extreme in your face racers with pop punk and urination on Japanese girls, I end this video with Wave Race 64. It's less like the X Games and more like the Golf Channel on a Sunday afternoon listening to synth rock. This game is such a vibe and something the sequel could never replicate. You got all these wonderful stages that open new paths depending on lap or difficulty. Tides will change, fog will clear up, gates will open while Wave Race is forever. Oh look, a recycled texture from Mario 64, that's cool. Welcome to Southern Island. When looking at the early trailers, the jet skis were once boats that could transform, but I suppose showing humans interacting with a vehicle was more visually impressive. These water popping physics were insane for 1996. While not realistic now, it still has a pleasing gelatin-like appearance. Maybe that's what attracted so many others to these kinds of games. Transparent stuff just looks nice, and tropical environments are synonymous with vacations away from the stuff stressing you out. There's no killing in these worlds, just driving. Many of these titles were created in the right place and right time when arcade racers ruled and could show off liquefied simulations. But with graphics so advanced now, there's more to display than just water. I'd say they don't make them like they used to, but some smaller developers will always be there to keep a niche genre afloat. As for me, this was a video topic I always wanted to do, but wondered if anyone else actually cared. Hopefully they do. If not, get bent. You are the champion! Congratulations! Don't you want a rematch? The bags are packed. The cooler's stocked. We're going on vacation, and it's not gonna be pretty. This summer, we're turning this nice, quiet beach house into MTV Central. All your favorite shows. Half the clothes. Don't worry, you've got an open invite to crash at our place. Stay tuned for details. Plug into MTV Summer and feel the burn. The Sprite, it belongs to me. Come and get it.